Greetings to one and all. I am Rishika Tejpal, legal intern at UB Advocate. There is a question, if one can file the same suit over and over, the answer is obviously no. Why? Because there is bar of relitigation. That is, we have the principle of res judicata under section 11 of the Civil Procedure Code. To know about res judicata, we will be talking about the meaning and scope, object, essential conditions of res judicata and the constructive res judicata along with a few exceptions to the principle in this presentation. So let's just begin with the presentation. Meaning and scope of res judicata. The doctrine in substance states that an issue or a point decided or having a shape finality should not be allowed to be open over and over again. Why? Because people will never be satisfied. They will just keep on going to the court over and over. Rest judicata is a plea and not an appeal. So it just applies to the suits and not to the appeal. Justice Das Gupta, in the case of Satyadhan Goshal versus Teoji Babin, that is the case of 1960, has explained the doctrine in the simplest words as the principle of rest judicata is based on the need of giving finality to the judicial decision. Object of rest judicata. The doctrine of rest judicata is conceived in the larger public interest, which requires that the litigation must, sooner than later, come to an end. This doctrine is based on three maxims. The very first one is Nemo David Zigzagzari pro una et adam causa, which means that no man should be vexed twice for the same cause. And then, in trust republic a upset senior glibium, which means it is in the interest of the state that there should be an end to the litigation. Then, Res judicata pro veritate occupator, which means a judicial decision must be accepted as correct. Here we have an example of the principle A few B for rent, B contends that A is not the landlord, and the suit is dismissed. A subsequent suit, either by A or by X, claiming through A, is barred by the res judicata. Why? Because the matter has been already decided in a former suit. So there cannot be another subsequent suit involving the same matter. It doesn't matter if A is going himself to the court or there is X who is, you know, claiming the title through A. Then we have the definition. Here the definition is broken into five pointers and I have highlighted a few essentials of the rest judicata which is provided in section 11 of the Civil Procedure Code. It reads as, no court shall try any suit or issue in which the matter directly and substantially in issue has been directly and substantially in the issue in the former suit between the same parties or between parties under whom they or any of them claim litigating under the same title in a court competent to try such suit or suit in which such issue has been subsequently raised and has been heard and finally decided by such court. Taking the former example, there was a matter which was involved in a former suit. So they cannot be the you know same matter which can be raised in another subsequent suit. It doesn't matter if parties are going themselves or there is another person who is going through them to claim the same title and that have been you know decided by the competent court. So there will be the bar of free litigation and the principle of res judicata will be applied. Then we have constructive res judicata it is basically an artificial form of res judicata and an aspect of extension of general principle of res judicata. There is one of the cases that is State of Uttar Pradesh versus Nawab Hussain, that is a case of 1977. So it simply includes the pleas which the you know defendant already could have taken in a former suit, but he didn't took them and he's going to the court, you know, by way of subsequent suit and saying that oh, this could have happened. So the same has been, you know, held by the Supreme Court in that case. And the Supreme Court held that the plea was with the knowledge of the defendant and he could have taken in the former suit. So it wasn't in his favor and the suit was dismissed. Then we have a few exceptions of the principle of res judicata. See, the principle will not apply if there exists any of such ex exceptions that is, the judgment in the original suit was obtained by fraud. So if there, if there is a proof that the former suit was fraudulent, then there will be no such principle which will apply to the, you know, suit. And 
the subsequent suit will be allowed obviously or say when there is a change in law and the law itself permits that there can be such suits so there will be no application of the principle of res judicata and then if there is say a court which was not competent to decide the matter so also there will be no application of the principle of res judicata or say there is a different cause of action in case of all such exceptions there will be no bar on the you know principle of res judicata or simply say if there is no essential fulfilled which is provided in the section 11 then also there will be no bar of litigation and there will be no you know application of the principle of res judicata so that's all for today thank you